So uh, welcome back to Critique Hour, everyone. I took quite a little break there, um, but it was fun. I did some streaming with you guys, and it was absolute havoc and a lot of fun. Um, but let's get back to business. Uh, so a couple of announcements to make. Um, so the first announcement is the, uh, the Community Challenge due date <clears throat> for the Alien Design Challenge. Um, so that will be due sometime within the next two weeks. I will let you guys know with a quick update on the due date, um, but it is due very, very soon. So within the next two weeks, so it could be next week, it could be next Thursday um, that it's due. I will let you guys know. You guys have had a lot of time to work on it, and I can't wait to take a look at them. And, um, and then after that, once that is assigned, I will announce the winner for the creative writing submission. It's not really a winner. It's just which one we'll do first. We might go through all of them. I might leave this up here for a while on the Reddit. Uh, because, you know, it's really fun going through your narratives, you, the stuff you guys wrote and making everybody draw something for it. Uh, so that's really, really fun. Right. So right after that, I'll announce which one we'll be using for the uh, creative writing submissions. Thank you, everyone who posted something. You guys are ama amazing. Thank you for taking the time to give us your story. Um, I can't wait to take a look at them. And then uh, Portrait Studio is on sale. I'll be using Portrait Studio today for this critique hour because it's very, very appropriate. Um, and if you want it, it's currently on sale at almost 50% off. So please have a look um, on my store. Uh, to get to my store and to get to the Reddit, go to istabrak.com and click on the little Reddit icon right here. And that'll take you to our Reddit. And then you can go to my store right here. All my brushes are on sale as well. And then finally, I want to show, not finally, there's more announcements. I want to show you guys my private tutoring wall. Um, for those interested in private tutoring, obviously it's out there. Everybody knows about it. I offer private tutoring. Um, it's not cheap, <laughs> um, but it is uh, something that for those who want to put a lot of time and effort into their portfolio um, outside of critique hour and enter a more like one-on-one -on -one school um, environment. And one thing I wanted to show you guys, yes, those are my prices, <laughs> um, is the showcase wall, student illustration showcase. It's really, I'm going to start building it. I've not been sharing um, a lot of the illustrations my student make for me, but uh, usually you guys think that this is the only stuff we do. So before and afters and 14 day challenges and stuff like that. But no, we do illustrations together. Once students graduate this preliminary level um, and being able to pull off a very simple portrait, template that they have handy indefinitely. It's like a dependable skill set. They learn how to make a really dependable portrait. Uh, we move into illustrations. Um, and these are just some of the features. You have quotes from the artists if you wanted to hear from them. Um, and it's, it's going to start building up. So if you wanted to quit, have a quick look at those, I, I love showing off my students work. Um, they're all so talented and so dedicated and my tutoring with me lasts something like a year, six months. Um, sessions are like two weeks apart, three weeks apart at times. Um, so, you know, depending on which package you get, obviously, but it's a continuous, really, really close apprenticeship um, school environment. <clears throat> there are rules to this agreement. Obviously, you can't disappear for a year and expect your sessions. Um, and you obviously, have, because it's one-on-one, -on -one, I have to put up protections for myself because, you know, anybody could sign up with me. Um, and so uh, th there are some rules to behavior and protocol and all that, obviously, with any school. Um, these are just the same rules with any school. But other than that, it's really, really fun experience. It's just a lot of fun. And we customize the portfolio we work on um, with, with to you. What is it that you want to do? Even students who want a semi uh, realism anime style, I will help them work with that. Speaking of which, on my store soon you'll see a tutorial for sale. It's the, one of the only tutorials I'll be selling that will not be for free and it is the anime semi-realism tutorial package. I might be selling it here, I might sell it on another third party, I'm not sure, or second party, I don't know what you call it. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about that yet, but it might just be sold on my store. And then finally, on my on uh, no, it's on my Instagram, you'll see that I have been uploading on my stories and on my YouTube community wall, I've, I've been uploading sketch challenges. There are daily, weekly, bi-weekly sketch challenges that are really, really fun because they just remove all pressure. It's not like, a, you know, a challenge, a community challenge, or a reference piece, or an illustration you have to post anywhere, you know, if you don't want to. It's, look at this part, like, look at this photo that I pick for you guys. 
And what do you think of it? What does it make you want to do? Does it make you want to illustrate, sketch? What does it make you want to do? A doodle? Do it and share it. And I post it up on my Instagram. So I like to, you know, help everyone connect to everyone. Um, and usually it's mostly community people that follow me on my Instagram. Um, and so I share everybody's posts. Everyone who posts something, I share it. Everyone who participates, I share it. There's going to be a limit to that, obviously, in the future. Um, but, uh, but everyone who posts, I'll be sharing, um, what I, you know, what's sent to me, if I can find the time to look through all the DM requests. So you do have to DM me on Instagram or share it as a story so it can notify me that you have. And I upload it on my stories and we all get to look at what we each painted. I started participating with it when I first put it up, but lately I've had zero time because I have an XP pen portfolio, I mean, um, tablet review for the artist 22 second gen. Um, that I have to work on as well as a bunch of other crazy shit that happened to me so far this year So I have not had a lot of time to sketch but I but I still find time here and there and I upload the references I use to you guys as a sketch challenge Yes, it's been extremely busy. It's been crazy busy. I am losing hair. <laughs> no, no um, And so let's get into today's critique hour. I have no other announcements. Thank God So this piece has got a lot of issues with it um, the most important issue is the gesture because it's something is happening to the gesture that it's just not making any sense. He is standing like a Herculean conqueror, like, like Alexander the Great. He's not standing like a guy who's dedicated his entire life to the research and development of evil potions. So he's like a apothecary potion master villain dude. And he is dressed up like a knight, which is the big X. And this is not who you cast, at least if it's bad casting. This is not who you cast as the... It is, it could be who you cast as the potion guy. But it is not good acting. Alright, let's make the distinction. So the acting is something you, are the artist, have to do. Do you see what I'm saying? Is it In a movie directing situation... The actor is assigned this role and he brings the role to life, right? Um, but if this is a art situation, you are the movie director, you are the cameraman, you are the lighting expert, you are the actor, you are the costume designer. Do you see how much responsibility you have as the um, potion seller? You are the potion seller. Um, you see how much responsibility you guys have to your illustration? Um, Potion seller. I'm going into battle and I want his strongest potion. Um, exactly. So let's give this guy a better gesture because it's not reading like a type of successful, proud moment that a character who's haunched over a table all his life would do. Um, so let's look it up. Let's see what we can do. First, actually, I'm just going to put it together through Portrait Studio because I'm not even going to try to guess. Um, all right. So when I think of a guy who's holding a potion, but he's also, I'm just going to start off with the most important aspect of his character, which is after I press the joint, I want to move, I press E. I'm just going to haunch him forward and give him that artist's forward haunch. All right. And then I'm going to tilt his head forward. So we have this like default nerd stance. This is the nerd stance. <laughs> um, and uh, what we want to do is preserve this gesture in the, in the shoulders and in the back because it's it's going to help us characterize who he is he's not a guy who's put his athletic performance ahead of his job for, for you know all his life so i'm gonna also tuck in his neck give him a little bit more of a lanky look go for it make it crazy um all right and so this is this looks great already just this alone is reading a little bit nerdy and then what's the rest so he's also really proud um, so maybe his arms can be a little bit more, less Herculean. So when a Herculean person is successful, he's like, ha ha, you know, and he sounds like that grain giant, uh, peas, you know, the peas, you know, that little, you guys know what I'm talking about when they were selling peas and bags and there was a green giant, uh, logo, the picture, the mascot, is that still a thing? I don't know. Um, so now he's standing like a hero. 
maybe I'm not going to do this. Maybe I'm just going to do something with, with the wrist a little more relaxed, you know, just something a little bit more lightweight, nothing where my upper body can lift three grown men. You know what I'm saying? He looks too much like uh, a guy who just won something and he should be outside with the sun on his face and the blood of his enemy on his sword. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I'm going to keep thinking about that. Kind of like a weak armed tucking of the, of the elbow. He's just a lanky, he's a lanky guy. He hasn't dedicated his life to perfecting his, his form. And I'm going to keep rotating. He's going to be, yes. He's like, yes, I did it. I did the thing. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to tuck, I'm going to try to tuck his, move his shoulders up. So I'm going to press um, W and just kind of move his shoulders up. The other arm. Okay. So he's holding the bottle and he's looking at it in the light and his head is tilted towards it looking at it all right so look at how nerdy he looks do you see what i'm saying and no offense against nerds we love nerds here we're all nerds here um and then where is that light coming from so i'm just gonna press one and let the light kind of shine on him a little bit just like that so we could at least get the primary right or in this case partial primary because the secondary light source is going to be the, the, the fireplace I put down here for him unless he's cold-blooded. He's purple so maybe he is cold-blooded. I don't know. So see how much I'm just going to shine the light on him instead for now so you can see. Do you see how nerdy he looks? Do you see what I'm saying? So what were some of the biggest changes I made just now and why did I change them? Yeah, Twitch is very weird. New posture, less heroic archetype looking. Beautifully put, much better than I did. Um, so the archetype, the, 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 the hero, the, the Achilles archetype is no longer there. And he looks like a guy who's been focusing for a while um, on this. Maybe he could tilt his head and have a little bit more of an inquisitive look. He's very proud. Yes, I finally did it. I can finally kill the queen and, and, and take all the gold. Um, all right. So let's take this over to our piece. This is the tricky part. Oopsie. This is the tricky part because this is where we will be um, run, like correcting the piece. So this is going to be really tricky. I want to get the perspective of the camera perfect. I, I did the light. I'll ignore the light for now. Actually, I did not do, I did not change the light because I want this light here and I don't want to bring in a secondary, but in Portrait Studio, you can bring in a third, second light. Um, to, uh, to, to have a, pri a secondary um, ambient light or rim light travel across. But the camera, let's make sure if that's perfect. I know he thinks, he looks like he's thinking, but I want him to look like he's still thinking. Um, I don't want him to look like, he looks proud, basically. The way he's standing, the legs, the shoulders, he looks, he still looks proud, but he still looks like a nerdy boy, which is what I want. So let's we'll see, I don't want to put the camera too low because it's not really a high perspective piece. And then I'm going to just take a screenshot with green, uh, with my green shot, but you could use the little screenshot icon right here. And I'm going to close that, open that up, open my little reference here on the side, and get going. Which is going to be a lot of stuff to correct. So this is where the critique actually starts. Um, let me sever all the head. No, actually, I'm going to leave the head where it is because at the end of the day, no, I'll just, I'll just take it out and just cover all this up. Bear with me. I will be done this pretty quickly. Um, I wonder if YouTube would ban me if I use that word here. Do they? Do other channels and videos have the term in it? I don't know. We were using it for educational purposes, YouTube. Don't start. 
Alrighty, so <clears throat> let's let's try to do this. So I'm gonna ignore the head. I'm just focusing mainly on the body. Just trying to get that total, instead of having to do all of it with liquefy, just trying to get the total arc in the spine accurate to the reference. And even though it looks like we're not seeing the spine from the side, um, Oh shit, ah oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna do it, fine. Even though we're not seeing the spine from the side, this looks like, you know, he's doing that. Um, we can still tell that he look, look, looks a little bit too heroic because at least straight or curved forward, at least straight or haunched forward, not, you know, f uh, chest out, because that just looks way too heroic and it does not read well as, you know, what it's supposed to. And I'm raising these shoulders up, I should have just done this. I'm raising the shoulders up to make it look like, you know, he haunches forward, he's a little bit nerdy, and that's where, it, that's where it comes from, really, is that forward haunch we all have while drawing away at our desks. And then I'll try to tilt the head in a little bit, but I might have to do a couple passes with both. Okay, and that looks a little bit more accurate, does it not? So, looks a little bit more appropriate to the setting as well, because look at where he lives. He lives in his mom's face. <laughs> not that that's funny. We are all struggling in this pandemic. But I'm just saying, it looks like he's, you know, in a dungeon of some kind, an unfinished basement that they were going to do one summer and they never got around to it when he moved in. So, <laughs> oh God, I'm going to get banned. Um, so, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm just getting rid of that leg here, making him look a little bit more nordy. And it's, it's mostly in the body type as well. He's got like really broad shoulders. And if you want to make somebody look a little bit more um, nerdy, I guess, just get rid of that. I go to the gym seven, eight times a week. And look, you know, just get rid of that. Give the shoulders a little bit more weakness. Definitely not, I guess, staunch him. And he can still be handsome, you know. He can be a guy that that said, you know, screw it, I don't need my looks, I just need my brain. That could easily have happened. But if we want to get rid of the body type mostly. You keep him handsome. Just get rid of the body type that says he has time to research alchemy and, and, and necromancy, but he also has time to go to the gym ten times a week. And I kind of want to tilt his head the other way now, too. And really, something else that I could not pull off earlier was I'm just lowering his head even lower. Not so much that he's deformed, but just enough that he's a little bit more, you know, inquisitive looking, scientific looking. British Empire looking. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't even know what I mean. I'm just up here freestyling. <clears throat> okay. And the arm, as you can see, is a little bit hiked up a little bit too high. So I'm going to try to push it up. So it looks a little bit more in perspective. I'm not sure what's happening with the hands though. And then I'm going to try to tilt his head a touch. Just 
just to give, it's not going to work because I need to like tilt it, tilt it. There's also other ways we could make it, you know, tilting it back just a little bit and tucking his head closer to the serum. Making him look more like a scientist, like a lab expert. Really just getting in there, just close, just getting real close. <laughs> Alrighty, oops. And I'll flip the canvas. That's our keyboard shortcut that keeps resetting on me. Alright, and then I'm just gonna go back into liquify and mess around some more. That out our shoulder with paint. Um, okay. I'm just getting rid of the neck thickness, which is also super heroic and Herculean. I just want to make it more of a hunch forward. Flip the canvas. And it's it's mostly in this gigantic arm as well. It looked fine before all the extra stuff, but I want to uh, really push it and uh, make the arm make a little bit more sense. Might have to rotate it out, but that would mean changing the direction of the eyes, and I don't want to overpaint too much. So maybe grabbing the whole arm and moving it in a little closer. Checking the navigator to see if it works. It's looking better. And then I'll go all the way back to the start and get try to get some of the background I painted away. Again, this is about matching the body type to the occupation. Um, and it was not working what you were doing before because he just looked a little bit too athletic. And it doesn't make sense. Even to this world, it doesn't make sense. You know, we've seen these stereotypes before and their stereotypes aren't bad. They're just the result of human society. It's just, you know, the jobs we, we, do, we do, the jobs we take on based on our, you know, vocation and then the way that it changes our look and in turn that results in patterns across different people. Stereotypes are not evil. Stereotypes are not racism. It's just habits that we've seen, patterns that we've seen. Um, I think racism is racism, you know, but a lot of people have tried to equate the two and that's not, that's not right because then sometimes it's just outside of race, sometimes it's just a job that looks a certain way with the people who run it <clears throat> so believe in the stereotypes believe in the archetypes because they're you know the stereotypes are the source of all of these um tropes that uh that we have in movie making and then another thing that you were doing which is fine to have him have this hair but again it's a question of does he spend time combing his hair i have a little story to tell you guys no actually i should not but i will um, so I, no, actually I will not. <laughs> Basically, they don't take care of their hair and they don't bathe and they don't really care about body odor. You fill in the blanks about who and which group I'm talking about. But God almighty, if these people, you know, they spend so much money on their, their craft, you know, and, and the stuff that they do. Uh, but they, what is, what is like, what does it cost, you know, to have a deodorant in your, in your arsenal? And not much, a couple dollars, but it's not priority to them. Why? Because put yourself in their minds. I'm an empath, so I try to put myself in their mind. They just don't have the mental space to give a shit about anything more than maybe one shower every four days. 
They're just so focused on this craft of theirs, whatever it is, that they just don't really have time to cut their hair and keep it cut. And I have met the other side. I have met a com complete idiots. IQ equals up to, you know, half a decimal, ha half, half a decimal, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> half a one, a 0.5, right? That's their, that's their total IQ. And they're always taking care of themselves. They're always getting their hair did, three haircuts a month. You know, so it's, it's these stereotypes are real and they're not to, to cancel them out is to really weaken yourself as a observer of society, because that's what you are as an artist. You're observing what happens in the world. You're observing human patterns, human characteristics of human behavior. So that when you're drawing, you're drawing with absolute accuracy and insp inspired by what's around you. So I don't think this guy's got time to get his hair cut so perfectly. And I know, I know, I know there's characterization and the realism of being a, um, you know, is there, how much realism do we really need to tell a story? Not a lot, but enough that um, the story is believable, especially if you're going for full realism. So I would, I would focus a little bit more on, you know, a hair that looks handsome still, but a hairstyle that looks handsome still, you know, still makes him look like a guy that might seduce a girl uh, for his own ends, you know, to use her in a little thingamabob right here. But also not a guy that we would say um, cuts his hair every single day. Or, you know, cuts his hair that many times. So, what I'm going to do next is shroud him in some shadow. Because what I want to do is bring out that light in the background that'll really make him pop. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. And this layer here, I am going to start illuminating what's going on. What's going on? Oh, it's too big. Okay. All right, so I'm just illuminating this whole area so that he has this eerie silhouette to him. You know, this is just him in the dark little room that he has to keep dark to grow his evil little mushrooms or whatever it is he does. So because we want that accuracy in the storytelling, um, because the, the lighting, the light environment made it so that he's this mysterious chef and working in the dungeons, uh, we have to refortify that light environment. We have to make it so that it's continuously telling the same story. And a silhouette, it goes, it, you guys know how much I love silhouettes. It's not because I'm biased to silhouettes. It's because they're just good for everything. They're good for a divine revelation moment and Jesus coming down from the skies. They're good for a, a, a evil a, uh, enemy introduction, such as we see in every single anime show ever. Um, silhouettes are just, they tell stories, you know, they don't, they don't let you see everything all at once. They let you slowly, um, uh, see the character. They kind of let you get the character in pieces, which is really, really cool. So it's used everywhere. I mean, I was watching that lock and key. I was trying to watch that lock and key show on Netflix. And you know that character in the well, how she starts off as a silhouette. That was really spooky and cool and ugh, silhouettes are just the fucking best. I should have been a camera guy. I should have been a lighting guy. Um, so I'm gonna just delete so that that silhouette is nice and strong. All right, so see how it's just, it just does better when we have a nice strong silhouette. And then I'm going to continue that same idea. I'm just going to try to get that light right behind him. And then right over here, start bringing in the shadow, keeping it all, you know, the color that you intended. You like that show? I haven't really gotten into it yet. It gives me anxiety, <laughs> but what doesn't nowadays? Um, let me see how the silhouette is really doing a lot now. And it's just to show off more of that. So we kind of push the silhouette to be right behind him a little bit. 
it's showing off more of that environment behind him. You get light so that we could see more of those dark instruments that he's using um, to run the whole show. Now that we did that, you have a really nice chance to, uh, to, to bring in a light that'll show all of the glass in the foreground. Um, and so all these, all these little instruments here, these vials and tubes, they can all start getting some of that. I'm um, too zoomed out, sorry. Start getting some of that, that primary light. And they can be a little bit more visible. With glass, it's tricky because you're not really seeing glass. You don't see the glass. You see the light trapped in the glass. And so you have to go through. And then I'm going to let some of that subsurface kind of scatter through the through the vial here. Oops, I'm on desaturate. And I'm going to try to go back to where it was before and get some of those instruments you had back on. And that's really all that I wanted to talk about for this one. I have another one I wanted to cover. Okay, but for the composition, I'm just going to do some quick changes. I still want it to read like it's a dark area. So I don't want the light to travel up too high as some sort of god ray. God rays are what we let escape the canvas. Um, you know, atmospheric uh, uh, silhouette are what we let kind of hang out only in the confines of the canvas, but we still let that kind of uh, umbrella shadow overhang. And then I'm gonna bring in some of that rim light. All zoomed out, because that's where you make your best decisions is when you're zoomed out. And you might want to consider letting some of that light from the vial bounce on his face. <laughs> and uh, just show how he's obsessed with that vial, you know? <laughs> That's not sounding good. Um, so just letting some of that light hang out on his face. And then because he's a magical creature of spells or something, um, I'm going to let his eyes light up. And I don't want it to look like he's deformed or anything. Just to kind of help out the rim light here because I'm going to bring in another light from down there. I might, I might actually not keep all the rim light because it's, it's a little too strong to be honest. So, I'll keep some of it definitely, just where the light hangs out, but not all. All right, and then what I'm going to do after that is just bring in something to cancel all this out. Some kind of nearby fireplace he set up if he needs one. It's really up to you, um, but it'll just help make sense and be nice, you know, a nice uh, contrast from all that purple wash in the environment. If you feel like adding it, it's really up to you. Yes, the vials will have some of that yellow light on them, but for now I'm going to just cancel it out of them and see what I can do. The rest of the outfit. And what would be really cool is if you just, instead of making it so that it's a silhouette behind, it'll still work as a silhouette behind him, but if you had some kind of, um, 
really distorted long window grill you know from like a, a high maybe he's in the sewers and that's what we're seeing in the background so everything apart from those gets shadow in the background oops select inverse gets that dark value so we kind of get this really cool comic book looking effect here and we let some of the rest of it just turn into smoke just behind him oopsie select inverse do you see what i'm saying it looks really cool when we bring in something in the background to show like that he's underground <laughs> forget mama's basement he's holed up in the sewers <laughs> yes exactly actually i'm just gonna go ham on this light and then erase away as i need to afterward Or it could just be the moonlight coming through the um the the, the stuff you know the the the, the iron bars of a, of a dark tower or something like that and i'm gonna obviously because it's light i'm gonna blur them and that's gonna look super cool as well um I'm going to try to brighten this a little bit more. I'm going to mess around with different colors. Maybe a red might actually do more for us. I mean, a red would look cool. So let's let's go through them. Uh, let's go through the different color options you have. A red would look cool. Um, but we already have the red of the vial, which it's taking away from. Some purple light from a nearby instrument or something. Really, the world is your oyster. Is that how you say it? This looks really eerie, because you know that green that I talk about, that evil, wicked uh, scientist, evil scientist and Disney green, or, you know, evil villain magic green. Looks great, uh, contrasts the red really nicely, but it, it all looks good, honestly, because the light environment is so clean. I wonder my man's a stinky incel. He's making potions in his poo water lair. <laughs> well, you gotta do you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, when you have a plan for a world domination, you gotta you gotta. There's sewers involved in that somewhere in that equation. All right, so I like the red one to be honest. It just makes it more eerie. Um, but at the end, it's your choice. So let's look at the before and after. And let me tell you one more thing. I'm really holding back on the silhouette. Like, I'm really controlling myself right now. You can make it even more... Son of a cow. You can make it even more eerie. Even more creepy. Actually, I'm going to play around. You can really darken his image so that we're barely see it, seeing him. And then you just gonna, you're just going to have to, you know, fill in some more instruments here. Maybe a creature trapped in a vial or something like you did that you did that there um okay so you can you can really do a lot more as for what to put in the background i would say redo some of the instruments in the background so i would you know i would put in another one of those little containment tanks you know with like a spindly some little um uh, what are they called squids hanging out in here uh, that would be really cool. You can blur that out of the way. Um, I would put a little cage. Maybe he's trapped his girlfriend who loves him and is dedicated to him <laughs> um, in here. And, you know, you see hands holding onto the cage. We're, we're a dark group. We are a dark group. We have dark thoughts. <laughs> um, and then we have some, you know, other little table with some vials, really twisted looking vials. They don't have to be perfectly shaped like this, you know, um, some more strange instruments of magic. And then you could have had uh, a weird looking uh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but they look great in basements and dungeons. 
Um, so you could have a little Iron Maiden hanging out. Fill the scene up with a little bit more um, than what you have right now because it feels really, really empty. So, oh no, I didn't put it on a separate layer. So, um, you know, you had this machine here, which was great, uh, but I'd, I'd put more tables, I'd put some more stuff so that it looks like this guy's been at this for a really long time. I'd like to see a rat sidekick chilling on his shoulder. Um, maybe it's Ratatouille stuck in the dungeons and he's just really wishing that he could, you know, go up in the, in the, oh, that's not a rat here, maybe this one right here, and he's just like, I wish I could go up there and cook some, some pancakes, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, man, I don't know, stop giving me ideas. Alrighty, so I'm gonna leave the scribbles on because I want you to just envision this the total critique hour that I really wish that I could do but I don't have time to do it. Um, okay, so I, I need you to see this whole image. Yes, I do select copy this many times. I'm just really paranoid I'll lose it. So before, after, okay, see how heroic he looks? He looks like he's the guy who hired the, uh, the, the, the potion master to make it. And he's like, ha ha, thank you, uh, uh, Neville. Thank you for this po this potion. <laughs> so I can use it because I'm going into battle. <clears throat> yes, every basement has cages for research purposes. Um, so after, it looks a little bit more to the, you know, more like the guy who just dedicated his, his, all his haircuts and all his muscles to this job. And, you know, sacrificed all his hair cuts and all his muscles to the job. Before, it just doesn't read as a very interesting character. It doesn't match. It's not matching. It feels like he should be holding a sword and a, a hilt, you know? Um, and then in the after, you have a nice light down here to bring out all the potions. Because stuff in the foreground is supposed to be dark and blurred. Um, so let me see if I can do that for you really quickly. should be a little bit more dark and then we can blur it a little bit filter blur just for that um, camera blur of objects in the foreground we'll make it we'll have a little bit more depth involved um, especially if you have a creature of interest here so maybe a woman trapped in a I don't know why I'm not trying to perpetuate <laughs> oppression of women but you know a little fairy or something trapped in here um, he is an incel after all. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on. So one thing that this is missing, and I came up with it while I was having a quick look at what I'll be doing today, it's missing the mush of life. When you guys paint, you, you really do lose that mush of life look. So the mush of life, what is it? It's how everything, no matter how clean you want to make things look on your face with makeup, no matter how clean you cut, there's an asshole with a bike outside right now. Ignore that, please. Um, how clean the cuts and edges you have on your fabric are. Um, you know, it, there's always going to be a blending, natural blending to the world. Because, uh, you know, along with our eyes and what we have in our, you know, vision, what weaknesses we have to perceive detail, the world itself is just all just mushed together. We're all just stuck together. So that means that hairs are not going to be at a perfect clean edge, you know, when you're painting this with filter and then show slides. That's good. Um, and the eyelids, the lower eyelids, are not going to be so perfectly cut. There's a little dark circle here if you notice it. It's right there. You see that? I'm putting my brush over it and it's not changing much. Much. That's the mush of life. All right. So at one point or another, the, 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 the moral of the story is one point or another, no matter how much blocking you do, you eventually have to increase the size of your brush and use soft brush to combine these things together so that they look organic and use your smudge brush to help you along as well. So the mush of life, you know, is that organic look to things that are organic. 
When you're painting a mechanical system like a car, there is no mush of life to that because there's no translucency. It's not a multi-layer organic substance. It's just metal shell. Um, when, you're, when you're drawing bugs, for instance, or something like that, you don't have to blend as much. But when you're talking about skin, hair, fabric, all that stuff in one big blob, and humans are just blobs, you need to start blending. There's a level to your painting process where all these things start to to come together and you don't really notice that until you notice it like you know it takes a while for you to notice that on your own I mean because it took me a while to notice hey these these edges are too far apart these edges are are too separate from each other I need to start mushing things in together because I'm looking at this artist here you know I used to I had a mo an idol of some uh, you know level back then I, I just looked at their work and I'm like what is it about it that looks like a photo but I know it's not one of the biggest reasons was well, one of the biggest reason was core shadows, and the second one was just that everything blended in together. And you may call it blending, but it's not as simple as that because blending is like, oh, okay, blend the cheek, blend the forehead. It's not really that mush of life blending. That's this hidden substructure of blending that makes all these components lock in together. That makes all these components look extremely normal to each other um that, that combines them okay so to make something look organic you're gonna have to start using your soft brush zooming out catch where these little trend lines are swatch on your on your photo look at what happens look at the value drop just under the eyelid that's a hard one to catch but it's a big part of that mush of life thing i'm talking about And the eyebrows are much thicker in the reference, but you just made yours little sticks and it killed a lot of the, 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 the humanness of the eye socket area. And it just took away from what it is that, you know, what, why did you pick this reference really? You picked it for a reason. So capture what it's giving you and give it the time respective to, you know, capture all of that. Any questions at all? My gut says this was repainted on top of the photo. Maybe it was, it's, a, it's still relevant. I hope not. I hope you guys aren't posting um, overly traced stuff. Tracing is a great learning tool, but it is not a replacement for your, you know, the, one of the most important technique skills to have as an artist, which is the ability to eyeball. Um, so I hope you guys are not thinking that this is a something that you can have as a crutch for the rest of your life. And I'm going to use a soft brush to kind of outline the lash line a little bit as well. So even if you do a paint by numbers approach and capture all the elements in the in the in the reference and you find that something is still missing, that's that blending, that organic haze of blending that sits over everything. The eyebrows are a little low, so I, I uh, raise them up. And then I'm just using soft brush now. Now I'm almost done. And I'm really just focusing on the eye sockets. I'm gonna try to do the rest of the face. And I'm using soft brush on a high value, you know, pure white, and using that to feather and using radial shading technique to layer in the values. Around the eyes. Those high values, that pure white that makes the eyes look better. And you see that, you see this, you see this like square of shadow right in between the eye. Don't be scared to do that. Just throw it in, throw it in, toss it in, see what happens. It really is amazing. It just makes the forehead feel so sculpted. And that's the stuff I'm talking about, that mush, where everything just starts to mix together. 
And this is again for those students that do everything right and still have this really plastic, hard looking um, result to the texture of the skin and they just, they don't know why the hell it's not looking good. Something looks off, something looks uh, unusual, something looks robotic or android like to the to the reference to the to their reproduction this is why because they they are blending you know they are still blending oh yeah they'll blend but it'll still look robotic and that's because they're not um they're not blending within in between the blends so to speak and then because they're on the same layer i have to do it this way and um, I'm going to blend out this lower eyelid space because though you had it on one eyelid, you kind of missed it on another. And I'm going to radially bring in that lower eyelid line. And the lower eyelid highlight. And then guess what? I'm gonna throw a haze of mush using my smudge brush on 8% strength. Remember, keep the resolution high when using my smudge brushes. A lot of people use them and wonder why the heck they're not working. It's because your resolution is like 300 or less than 1,000. Um, so I've been trying to get everybody to remind everyone I made this brush for like minimum 2,500 resolution width and width. Um, and now I'm just detailing but with a soft brush. I'm detailing but with a soft brush, remember. So that means the haze will still be preserved. And this is after, way after blocking, right when I'm polishing. And this is another quick tip to mush things together. Use the blur tool. Blur some of this stuff together. Because that's what's happening in the real world. And what's blurring everything in the real world? The human eyes. We don't see every detail. The brain does like, you know, fill in the blank kind of effect everything that we're not looking directly at. And even then, if we look at things directly, the brain still isn't seeing everything we're supposed to. The photo sees, sees it all. The camera sees it all. Um, but we don't necessarily see it all. So we blur things together. And even then, the photo itself can be blurred accidentally, you know, lens blur or something like that. I'm not gonna render the entire face, but just to complete the lesson, I'm just gonna try to sculpt out the nose so that we could have the, uh, the shine on the nose at least. And the eyes are different sizes, so her eyes touch the lower eyelid. These don't when they're two different sizes. Don't resize eyes in three-quarter view because you think the perspective there is so so huge. You have to resize the eyes in three-quarter. No, um, that's only if like there's foreshortening involved. Usually three-quarter view is equal distance, even if it's a slight difference. Okay, and I'll show you the before and after. Don't forget the mush of life. Write that back to me. I want to see it in the comment section. Mush of life. <laughs> Organic merging of things. Before. After. Take a closer look. Before. You know, you're at the stage. You're getting good. You know how to paint a face it with no reference, you want to dabble in some photo referencing, you want to teach yourself different varieties of portraits, that's great, you're going in the right direction. But for some reason, your work looks really cut and paste, it looks really paint by numbers, it looks really jagged, and the edges don't feel natural or organic. That's because you're missing that sub edge layer of mush that was in within the mush that I'm not because I'm being very careful as you can see because I don't want you to start over blending everything because you guys already over blend I'm talking about this the, the values that are almost invisible the blurred edges that are almost invisible the amount of soft brush that you need to use that isn't really visible until you zoom out and see how thick those eyebrows really were but in your mind's eye, you saw a thin eyebrow. You saw a general location for the eyebrow. Um, 
So just take a look at how more human, how much more human when you bring in those miniature little shadows that happen within the smallest pockets or pockets in between or, or invisible valleys that we don't see all the time. And there's more work to do on this, but I'm running out of time. I'm so sorry. Um, but keep an eye out for, for that, those little hidden things in your, in your pieces that are keeping you from painting realistically. And one of the most hidden ones, one of the most hidden ones is the one that sits on top of all the shadows, the one that sits on top of everything for the eye socket. This little sneaky SOB right here that you could throw in and you really would not lose a lot because it, it, it just it's just a hidden little, you know, SOB that, that's just hard to see in a reference. But when you have it, it's just, yes, this makes sense. I like it. This is something that I was missing and I didn't know. All right. Um, I would delete away where highlights are, though, because her upper eyelid is catching quite a bit of highlights. So there's, and there's more to do in this portrait. I just don't have the time. So before, after, don't forget about that. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate you guys coming to the live streams. It means the world. Um, if you want your work on Critique Hour, I am currently bringing Critique Hour down to once a week just because my, as you saw earlier in the announcements, my schedule is absolutely nuts um, and I, I, I could use that little hour break in the day um, in between classes. So I'm only doing one Critique Hour a week instead of two now. That's still four Critique Hours a month, so it's still quite a bit. Everything is still running smoothly. Um, so if you want your work critiqued, you go to istaback.com and click on the Reddit icon here. If you want an easier way to build references, customize the light, the camera, and the character, um, as well as a number of other uh, possible combinations of all of that, go to my store and get Portrait Studio. It's on sale. Um, and if you'd like to uh, join me on Patreon, we're currently taking a break from illustrations just because it's all we did since January, but you can still submit illustration homework if you backtrack to the old assignments and still submit them. Um, and the rewards for this month are the recent is the recent painting I did on stream if you guys wanted to see how I do that. And there is a review coming up for the Artist 22 Second Gen XP Pen uh, desktop tablet, I mean the display tablet. For the longest time people asked me which one I recommend. I only had like one or two to recommend, but now uh, one to recommend which is the Huion, but up until now I will indefinitely recommend the XB um, Pen Artist 22 Second Gen. I'll cover that soon in the uh, in the upcoming video. But it is, it's a great tablet, and I hope you guys enjoy that video. But thank you everyone for coming. And even if you want to just join as a dollar, by the way, a dollar watcher, that means the world. If everybody joined as just a dollar, it's a very small amount to pledge, but it lasts a long time, and that means that everybody can join in. Um, it does not have to be a huge, um, you know, pledge, especially in this financial climate. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys on Thursday next, which might be the due date for the Alien Design Challenge. I'll see you guys then. Bye.